What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are finally working on the M5 and hopefully trying to get it started in this video. Hopefully hearing that exhaust, I heard it doesn't have a resonator or a muffler so it's going to sound really 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 good at the same time staying legal so it's, I mean it sounds like a great great deal but if we can get this engine to turn over, I've been doing a lot of research on the code the previous owner gave me and I can't really get much about it, the code is not very general so we're going to go ahead and use the Carly adapter to go ahead and diagnose the car, um, we will need to jump it though. It has absolutely zero power. Maybe that could be the issue. A bad battery not, may not causing it to start. I mean, it is a V10. It probably has a lot of other electronical stuff. So probably with a bad battery like the 7 Series, it couldn't crank. So the goal of today's video is just getting the M5 started. Hopefully, hopefully it will. Uh, my biggest fear is obviously we need a new clutch. And um, I, I also, another big fear is that the engine's bad. So fingers crossed that we have none of those issues. And hopefully it's just the sensor or hopefully it's just the battery. So let's go ahead and get to it. I couldn't sleep until this box got here. So shout out to FCP Euro for sending out the sensor. I literally always get my thanks from FCP Euro because again, lifetime warranty and everything with this M5 typically goes out again and again and again from what I've heard online. So again, lifetime warranty, always a big thing. Plus it's an OEM part, you can't complain. And I'm, yeah, I'm rocking in and out shirts because I love in and out They need to sponsor. First things first, let's go ahead and get our extension cable. Finally got a 16 foot, I don't know, 25 foot cable. That's pretty good. And hopefully it'll make it down to the M5. We have the jumper kit. Let's go ahead and just hook it up and leave it charging for a little bit. And uh, maybe wake up my brother and get some Chipotle. We'll have to see, we'll have to see. That's it. That's 25 feet. Oh, that's weak. Maybe a another 10 foot cable wouldn't hurt. <laughs> oh man. Okay, okay, okay. This is how far we got. Um, we might need to push the M5 forward and we might get lucky. After about two extension cables and a little jump box right here, hopefully um, once we push the car forward, it will connect. Unfortunately, it's on that side, not that side. Uh, let's just go ahead and give it a shot. All right, so we literally barely made it, but this thing's still not on. So let's go and figure out why that is. It's still all connected. Maybe that? Oh, buddy, talk about allergies, boys. Oh, man, why won't this thing jump? Is it because I have so many extension cables? I have no idea. All right, guys, after playing with the battery for so long, we finally got the trickle working. So we're gonna just leave this plugged in. I wanna get it in enough juice to hopefully get it started, move it on the driveway and leave it on the trickle overnight. But uh, just getting this thing started is literally 90% of the battle. If we get this thing started, literally it's in mint condition otherwise. This is our package we got from FCP Euro. Great packaging for a little sensor. I mean, this thing is deep in there. Little tiny box. We're hoping that it's either this little guy or the battery that's causing the M5 not to start. So again, I'll be back in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, once this thing's gotten a little bit of juice into it. Let me go see if my brother's awake real quick. I'm actually gonna put it on trickle real quick and just show you guys what the car is doing exactly. Also, thank y'all so much for the recent feedback. So apparently this little chrome or like silver speaker grill thing basically means the individual sound system so shout out to everyone that mentioned that in the comments in the last video i did read them and that's pretty awesome that means this thing has a step up in the sound system as well another guy's one of you guys said that one of these buttons controls the rear sun visor so oh wow it does have a rear sun visor let's go ahead and click that button real quick i should probably put the key in the ignition first <laughs> i don't know if you guys saw that but we got a rear sun visor boys and that's how you close it Oh, that is so sick. I never actually have one of those. I remember my brother had one of those, but it didn't work on his E92. Shout out to you guys for literally mentioning it. I didn't catch that part. That's pretty awesome. So the next thing is obviously trying to get this thing started. I just realized we have an airbag light. Why is that? Oh, we have the airbag sensors disconnected. Just realized that part. Obviously, when we disconnected the crash wheel, we also disconnected the two front airbags. Hopefully, that's not going to cause any issues in terms of airbags exploding on us. But hopefully, um, uh, it shouldn't interfere with anything. We just need to try to get the car started. So moment of truth. This is the first crank up. Yeah, it's saying it needs uh some, some so let's go ahead and try to jump it up obviously it's saying it's got a bad battery i did put the jumper on jumper status not just regular trickle charge i put the trickle on jump so let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and start this up i'll show you guys what it does exactly oh wow that battery is pretty much shot i don't know if you guys can see the screen flickering you know what i think we should let this charge some more it could just be the battery that's causing the engine not to crank but i mean we are waiting for the car to be trickled right now we are waiting for it to be charged so i figured we might as well jack up the car and just throw in the crankshaft sensor because this is the one that was getting a code for unfortunately i can't run the codes right now but let's just go ahead and throw this in because we have it might as well put a new one in first things first guys we just have to jack it up so let's go ahead and just jack it up put it on two jack stands and i'll show you guys the location it's pretty easy to get to the 
quickly guys, I'll tell you to jack from the front, but my car is lowered on some springs, so we're jacking it from the side for two jack stands. Let's go ahead and go underneath and find that sensor. Also, better safe than sorry, let's go ahead and remove this wheel and put it down there just so we're safe. We're just trying to be extra safe here since we're going underneath the car. At least now if the car drops, it'll drop on the wheel and yeah, it will damage the wheel, but at least I'm good to go. So we have a little good spot that we can go in here now. Let me go ahead and show you guys that sensor exactly. And once you're underneath the car, basically where the transmission connects to the engine right there, I don't know if you guys can see that cable right there. You disconnect it, there's one bolt to remove it. The bolt is, uh, it looks like it's facing us, which is pretty convenient. So, uh, so that's one of them right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. And the other one is directly, I believe, where is it? It's right up there. So let me get my flashlight. It's that one right up there with a dot on it. So that was actually, I think, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove that one and replace that one. Um, there are some zip ties holding everything up over here, which is kind of weird. Uh, but let's go ahead and replace that one just because there's actual screw on it. The other one looks like somebody jankified it, which is starting to make me believe it's the other one that's the issue. But let's go ahead and replace this one just because uh, we possibly can. And just like that, guys, out with the old, in with the new. Let's go ahead and, uh, there is some zip ties holding this thing up. I need to look up if there were some proper brackets down here that got replaced, but, uh, uh, any hill we have this sensor in there the other one I'm gonna have to order a new sensor for the other one because they're both have to do with the crankshaft um, But this one actually was the one that was throwing the code for so hopefully this is our issue and the other one We don't have to deal with just yet uh, But if we do have to deal with the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and place an order for it at this point Let's go ahead and just get this thing mounted back up with some more zip ties So this was the battery that's in the car. It's actually a newer battery. Let's go ahead and take it back. I think this is either from Costco or AutoZone. Let me go ahead and look this up. But either we can get a free replacement or at least we can get this thing charged up. So uh, I'll get back to you in a little second when I catch you figure out where this is from. Guys, yeah, about four hours later, we are now back to get our battery. So I hope it's charged. No idea, but we're hoping here. All right, guys, so after about six hours of them actually charging the battery for a 2020 battery, how did it go bad? I have no idea. Anywho, this is a Walmart brand. I'm going to take it back to Walmart and see if we can just exchange it. All right, guys, so we just got back from Walmart. Apparently, this, I don't know if this battery is from Walmart or not. Uh, but we can't exchange it, unfortunately. So, uh, looks like we're just gonna have to put it in the car. It should give the car some power, but it's probably gonna die after a couple cranks. So, uh, let's give it a shot. Please, call them stuff. Are you ready? Oh, actually, we should probably put on a trickle, too. Let's go ahead and put a trickle just to be extra safe. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. First, first crank. I'm so nervous because like honestly, it's like a 90% chance it's not gonna work But 10% of me is like if this works, I'll go home and sleep like a baby. No, you're gonna dance in circles like you promised Yes. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, please God It started though and it turned off Increased the emissions Do it again all right guys, I'm gonna go in and get my code reader and uh, just see what kind of codes it's throwing exactly. We have a few codes here. None of them is coming back for the engine. Uh, we have an engine one right here. Crankshaft sensor, potential consequence with power reduction and our uh, speed limitation or maybe we activate engine may or not, maybe difficult to start. Uh, camshaft bank one, power management battery. And then we have two major transmission codes, evaluation engine speed can steering angle all right guys well honestly it looks like it's not starting because of this because uh, everything else is like minor but the transmission one right here it's saying this is a major code so let's go ahead and look into that exactly all right guys so at this point uh, i'm just going to go ahead and clear all the codes real quick and just see if we get anything different this time because we did just put in a new sensor so let's just give it a shot we're enjoying our individual sound system before we get this thing to run <laughs> That's all I can enjoy. It's a very expensive sound system that I paid for. <laughs> all right, guys, we just cleared the codes. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a good crank. That's all that happens, guys. 
and we are here back at our house guys and uh, I've been just literally going through things online trying to figure out what this can possibly be I'm starting to think it's it's like a uh, the crankshaft sensor that connects to the clutch was actually like JB welded on so I, I bet you somebody stripped the screw with the, the the crankshaft sensor and I don't know if that messed up the crankshaft sensor JB welding it I don't think that would but that just because of a janky job like that I feel like also uh, possibly they re they installed the clutch or the flywheel wrong and that's why the car is not starting because I, technically it's like a manual so I feel like if something in the gearbox is not placed right it will stall out immediately so maybe that's what it is I'm not really too sure let me know down below guys if you guys can even tell what it is the previous owner did say he got a clutch replacement or a flywheel replacement one or the other and uh, he, I'm assuming it ran after that but right now or actually you can't even I mean I don't even know if it ran after that maybe right after he did it, um, it the car still wouldn't start and uh, you know end of the story that we, we have an we have an m5 that doesn't run but from the sound of the engine, do you guys think that the engine's good? Or can you guys tell if there's anything wrong with the motor? Um, I want to know if I should dump a bunch of money, get a new transmission, new clutch, new flywheel, all that stuff. And uh, pretty much go into that, you know, going through that route. Or do you guys think I should just try to chop off the JB Weld on that um, crankshaft sensor and replace the crankshaft sensor? On the M5s, both crankshaft sensors on the transmission, not the engine, which is kind of cool, um, kind of good. So I feel like if there's any issue uh, with the crankshaft sensors, it should be transmission related, not engine related like any other BMW. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know down below guys. This video is pretty much going up there so you guys can actually help me get this build on the road as soon as possible. So I would really appreciate you guys' help down below. If you guys can do some research, help your man out, hit me up on Instagram, send me some pictures, whatever it may be. Let's try to get this M5 on the road. I'm gonna be picking up parts hopefully for front end pretty soon. Um, so before we start working on the body, I just really wanna hear this thing crank over. So help me out guys down below. Without further ado guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys the next one. Peace out.